<laughs> Hello, beautiful people of the world. Sandwich here. And uh, we're going to be talking about the metaphor of the caterpillar into the butterfly, the metamorphosis in relation to society. I feel like right now, with all this COVID um, happening for everyone, uh, that that's what's happening. We're in that we're in a chrysalis stage. We're in an inner work stage where we're sitting at home contemplating how we want the new society to look and potentially be more freer and lighter and less heavy on fossil fuels and cutting down trees and um, we became the caterpillar that was consuming 300 tons, like 300 times its weight. It's like America would need like the, the rate of their consumption would need like two planets to survive if they kept on going on the way they were going. So um, yeah, from a spiritual angle, I think that that's what this COVID is for humanity is that we're, we're stopping we're stopping all this consumption and all this rapid uh, pollution. <clears throat> Over yeah. to you, Dino. Oh yeah, we've been allotted the perfect opportunity to really hone in on our frequency and vibration and intentions and what we want to create in the world. And I feel in my own world, now it's like now that I'm not, you know, having to rush around so much in terms of relating to the outside physical world, the inside gets very quiet and, you know, I'm starting to see some storms that I was maybe ignoring in the past and it's asking me to really refine my vibration. You know, I used to be, have this much room to just, oh yeah, life and this and this, but now it's like, what do you actually want to create? And it's resonating much clearer. And in that way, I feel like there's this magnetic force that's like tightening and trying to guide me into what is it? Who are you? What do you want to create? Who's important in your life to, to relate to? And, and starting to really get priorities structured in an orderly fashion. And when we have the time and the space to actually do the emotional processing and get the mental clarity to be able to, you know, breathe from ourselves as ourselves first in a lot of ways for the first time what i see is is this time of being alone is is actually bringing me more in contact with others through zoom and i've got you know two planetary guardian teams i'm training i've got three different shows i'm doing with people one-on-ones and then there's this triad here and then i have independence coming in to start to get training and I, with the green screen now, I, I'm excited because this is all I wanted. Just this alone, we could do so many things with just this. And so I, I find that the time alone for me is bringing teams together and sort of being the beginning of the launch point for Planetary Guardians as a sort of step out of that conclusion I've had for years, even though I've been socially interacting with people, but I really haven't getting done what I want to get done. So, so like Jordan said, now is a time where I'm actually getting things done. That I feel like the butterfly emerging. And as I'm floating around, I'm wondering where the other butterflies are. And we're starting to get in contact. Like I was in contact with someone from Hong Kong. I was in contact with someone from San Francisco. I was in contact with someone from Costa Rica. And there, everyone wants to sort of help the pupae get through the transformation by getting the other butterflies together to show maybe the pupae that this is where the party is, but I'm not so sure that the pupae want anything to do with those butterflies. So I'm not so sure about that. Beautiful. <clears throat> Beautiful. Like the chrysalis? What's that? I missed the, the well, what's the pupae phase? Can you just describe a little bit of that one from how it shows up in the people that you're interacting with? Well, I don't think it does. I mean, most people I think I'm interacting with are butterflies. Um, oh. the, the pupae seems to me might be the corporate media and their interpretation of what's occurring and the, uh, the 
control mechanisms trying to keep people pupae, trying mm. to keep people in that certain state of very closed and fearful and, and not realizing that, oh wow, as a species, you know, we actually could all become butterflies together. Mm -hmm. I feel um, Bruce Lipton, who is a cellular biologist who is talking about this metamorphosis, talked about in the chrysalis, there is a stage where like all the order, so all our old systematic order is not working anymore and it's disordered, so it's in chaos. And I think for a lot of people that are super heavily reliant before this happened are still within that kind of like fear and still grabbing on to mm, the, the information that this system that they believed in is giving them. And they're even like freaking out. But the people that have been doing like are more spiritual oriented or whatnot or alternative have already been like had this intuition that this was coming on and they were doing that work beforehand doing shadow work um like really looking within and like really like seeing what they didn't like about their system and how we could change it and i feel like maybe those are the butterflies so people are in just different stages and I think more of society and with our butterflies helping these other people see this new earth, this new sustainable way of organization that they can like come out of that chaos. They can finally surrender to listen to alternatives and, um, and then go through that metamorphosis. And what he used, he said that within that chrysalis chaotic stage, there are these things called imaginal cells. So these new imaginal cells are start to form the DNA and the new butterfly. So it's such a beautiful metaphor to like what's going on in our communities and what you're doing and like reorganizing these imaginal cells, this imagination in Jordan, this imagination of the future that you want to then come in to order and the actual, what are the actions towards that, that dream, that more sustainable co-creative dream um, so that we can actually and live it, live it and create it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been, um, you know, what was it now? Three weeks it's been since we've talked about the goals, the uh, the juggernaut, the uh, planetary guardians game of keeping kind of track, keeping a track record of your life through through setting three daily goals, and then being able to check on and having a point system that's associated with that. And I've noticed going into the process of uh, bringing that goal setting process into my life, it's really taken me like a lot of just like stepping back and saying like what is it that i want to accomplish like what is it what is the thing that i need to do what is the thing that i as a person as a human being on this earth need to accomplish to feel whole and to feel fulfilled and if i look at that thing and, and i just feel the light and feel the shine of that and then i see like okay, what are the angles of that? Like what, are the, like, what are the aspects of that for me? It's it's fashion and it's dance and it's having really great adventures with friends and making videos and music with people. And these are all different angles that'll, that, that I can come from. And so now I'm, it's been a really interesting process to see how, how do I create goals that I can kind of work all the angles to everything kind of come into the, the dream, the thing that, the, the, the thing that I'm envisioning for myself and that yeah it's quite an art in itself just to like to come up with goals of how you create the art you know of how you structure yourself so you can set yourself up to be able to be living the art that you want to create in your life yeah, what I see here is is again, part of the transformation of the butterfly, like let's say we had four people or three people in here. It's kind of like the, the, the butterfly may actually be when the humans come together as a team and start to share their gifts 
and realize that, wow, like you may be a wing, you may be a wing and, and maybe I'm the body or something. And we, we really can't fly. We really can't get to where we want to go on our own. So it's only when we connect with others in a much deeper way, in an organized way, in a way that works for everyone isn't some sort of authoritarian now you have to work for me to go do something we're 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 here in the spirit of collaboration we're here in the spirit of artists coming together going you know what could we create together at a higher level that i can't do by myself and i think that's what i found where i was floundering a lot over the last few years is that i really couldn't find my team really couldn't find the people that would look at the work that i was doing and going you know, we, we really want to use your work. You know, we don't want it just to just take over, but we want to use this specific thing. And I, I think Jordan is one of the few people that has been really taking into account what I'm sharing with him and using it. And, and then I've been taking into account what he's been sharing with me and using it. And both of us, I think, are, are, are changed. And I think now with, with his, Jordan has had a strong relationship with you, Sam, and you and I are, are beginning to connect and I'm, and I'm seeing that, you know, that a big missing piece is the feminine angle. The big missing piece is someone who's more in the body, someone who's more, as you said, in, in the senses. And uh, I, I still think there may be a fourth person coming in here. Uh, maybe not, but we'll see. And again, I, I, I just think that the ability for humans to work as on a media team of four people is the next step is the next stage for humans to come together right now i'm appreciating you know our, we, we are the move from two to three and interested in, in what will happen as we go along mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> it's really um comes down to trust. I'm reading this book. <clears throat> it's uh, I'm actually taking notes on it. It's called Western Mind, Eastern Body. And it's looking at the chakra systems and the development of a child. So incorporating psychology and also into your chakras. And um, I feel like because of the speed of our society and the demand, the masculine demand to kind of shut down emotions and to be like super externalized, like we need to go. We don't have time. We don't have time for that. We don't have to have time to look at our system. This would be something of hyperflex, I feel like, um, is that people uh, now we're like, we're, we're actually looking within and hitting walls and really like trying to like understand what what is that resistance what is why why am i why why am i feeling this way today why am i feeling angry why am i feeling alone um and then some days it's like why am i feeling so connected and there's a lot there's a lot of ciphering. There's a lot of psychology and in the body, there's a lot of, of relearning and re-understanding what these emotions, what, what is the map? What is it telling us? And uh, no one's wrong, but that's really important. And that is the feminine energy of like, that you don't need to produce something so fast we need to produce something that we can share and that comes from the heart and that is valuable. And if we're running into a resistance, maybe not blaming other people, but saying like, what, oh, is this, is this a root chakra? Is this a sacral issue? Is it like, I'm feeling scared. Do I have a right to be here? For instance, as a root chakra issue, like, like, you might be all creative and then, but like the grounding of it is like, is like um, something that happened when you're a baby. I'm getting really, really intimate right now, but I, I feel like it's really important in the reasoning why we have gone into this chrysalis stage and this chaos, because we really are of the time that we're also have the opportunity to look at at our psychology 
and look at like how can we really function in a society in a group when we've been very masculine focused one way product i don't need those emotions i don't need those people we do need each other and we always have um so a lot of grace to all our processes and i'm really excited that we are coming together and and with graceful vulnerability mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> Where are you at, Jordan, with your creative process? I did a really interesting practice um, the other day. I took uh, Sam gave me a little flower, a little, uh, a little plant, a little succulent in a little pot and I took the pot and I put it on a piece of cardboard and I drew a bunch of circles based on the bottom of the pot. So I had a whole bunch of these little circles and then I wrote down everybody's name that like I feel like right now a core like resonance with in terms of I create I want I'm wanting to and I, I'm creating and I'm wanting to create kind of an energy energetic bond with these people to co-create my my life. So all my friends and family um, are all present in these and I have, have maybe like there's like maybe 27 around there and I just did all these and I, and I set them out on the on my bed and I, I started fitting them together and I'm like oh my gosh this person really likes to connect with this person and this person really likes to connect and I just put just in my own intuition I'm like oh I think energy goes really well here and I started putting people together like a puzzle in my life and I, I built this like wing of of the community and and I, I i felt this resonance of of the people and you could like see the whole the energy of the whole community and then you could also see the energy of just one person or how two or three people connect and but in that way it's like i could see how i'm relating to everybody and in that way of creating goals i feel like family the idea of family and really um you know, respecting these these very integral bonds and really honoring the interlaced of, of our of our family is what I'm really coming into a higher comprehension and understanding of. And then to see this like to just look r r flat out at the people in my life and see what am I in, like how does this inspire me and see how I'm inspired by so many different people and how they're actually this incredible wonder of a gift each and every every one of them everybody in what we're sharing and what we're exchanging and how I just like I have so much to offer and they have so much to offer and we could all co-create together so in terms of especially with setting goals now since that's a big a, a priority is how to create a structure that I can have an order of creation in my life and to relate that with like tangible accountable um, collaborations and say maybe I have like this set of goals I'm gonna I'm gonna be accountable to this set of goals with this group of people so it's not just me needing to accomplish my own goals for myself it's actually me accomplishing my goals for a greater collective so that my goals don't just if i don't get it done well i didn't get it done but if i didn't get it done and somebody else was like counting on me to get it done then i'm like oh like i because as soon as i get it done for them they're going to be able to accomplish something like that from something in their world and bring that back and i'm going to be able to see the process like see a flower grow and know that i'm not responsible solely for the growth in my own life, that we're all growing this garden of our community together. I'm not just a flower, I'm a member of the garden of our, of our collective family. Beautiful. I, I think to add to that, I, I know that um, creating that reference point for us to come together is sort of more my 
what I'm working on, and, and I think that the, anyway, I have this map of the times where it's <laughs> from, <laughs> yeah, what a big surprise that is. Eh? Um, where you go from the personal space to the one-on-one -on -one space to the group space to the community space, and we're right now we're in the group space. And I'm, and I'm noticing on this other map that I have, you know, the beginning of my schedule forming. And this is something which I've been sort of, as an inventor or an artist, you don't want to get too scheduled in, even though you, you have to put, bring in a certain schedule towards what you have to get done. But now I've got like two plantar guardian teams, I've got three independent shows, and I've got some independence. And there's a lot of team group effort happening right now. But the next week, is the personal space. And I'm gonna need a lot of time to process and to come up with the next set of tools and to, and to, to work on. And I, I'd like to share with you, and I'm just gonna pause for a second, okay? Mm -hmm. I go record, share screen. Okay, can you see that? So yeah. if we look at the media team, there's five media teams in each superhero team. Now there's seven superhero teams in a mm -hmm. shared knowledge community. So in the shared knowledge community, there's science, economics, education, technology, education, health, philanthropy, politics, governance, and community. And then if you go to 101, you have research, infrastructure, learning, operations, creativity, synergy, services, interface. And there's a lot of parts, right? Mm -hmm. now, if I, now, if I click on one, that creates mm -hmm. the chat room. If I click on another one, that clicks the chat room. If I click on another one, you can have three chat rooms open at once. But so, okay. so what this does is it's creating a way to bring together um, a lot of different people in a lot of different chat rooms um, in one place. And then what I'm also, what I'm working on now is a custom design chat room where you can change the conversation type, you can change the value, there's points aside, there's a, a mission objective, and there's a timer. So in each chat room, it's like a little game area where we would come into that chat and then we'd have a goal and that we'd have a timer on and we'd have a conversation type. And so as a facilitator, you would use this to program the chat room. <laughs> One more time. One more time. Okay. The, the chat room is mm -hmm. like this is like a fundamental unit of communication online, right? Mm -hmm. And it has a very unique blend. If, if the three of us were just chatting and, and typing, it's a very different type of conversation, right? But when you're writing, there's a different flow that can occur. So in each chat room right now, it's basically you can load a file and you can load a URL, right? But what I want to add to that is that you have a, a goal to that. particular. You create, it's like a mission box now. You have a goal for that particular chat room. You have a timer. So you can set the time, okay, we've got 30 minutes. We've got to discuss this particular thing in a brainstorm. We're gonna come up with ideas for, let's say, two of Jordan's shows. You've programmed, you know, the goal is to come up with uh, all the ideas for these web TV shows. Uh, the conversation type is a brainstorm. And we get, let's say, 30 group points, 50 community points, and no personal, points and no one-on-one -on -one points. Click. Now you have the timer going, now you have a chat, and when you're finished, you get points for doing that. And you just accomplished a part in a mission. Oh, just by, <laughs> just by contributing, just by like. Well, just, just by, like even, like it's almost like right here, let's say, you know, we, we started with a welcoming and then we go into a storytelling and then we go into a brainstorm. Uh, we would get like there'd be little let's say we had buttons along the left hand side of the process we started in this conversation type then we moved to this conversation type then we moved to that one so we're seeing the structure of how we're talking together 
within the tool that we're using. Mm. Yeah. I'd be interested to see, is there a way of tracking in terms of like the geometries of people in terms of like me, you and Sam right now are having this conversation so that the points that we were, the, the creation points that we were gathering basically were kind of like associated to the signature of our like prism right now of, of our, our collective. And then maybe you'd have your own account of points for your own. And maybe if you have another collaboration with somebody else, like those points are kind of associated with the, with the group or that formation. Well, so you, you can start to see really how team, how, which teams are working really well together. Uh, that would be really good. That would be a really good thing. Yeah, I think that the anything can happen. I mean, basically, what he told me is just design what you want, and I'll build. I'll build it. Oh, great, great, great. So, so can you post video too on the on the? Yeah, right cool. now I'm, I'm gonna. What the the latest thing is to have a place to stream videos or load a video, and then have the chat rooms around it. So we could actually have us in that and then have some other chat rooms of people outside the group maybe watching us. If I could, if you could watch it, if a group could watch a piece of content and then have multiple, like, you know, have a conversation about this aspect of that piece of content yeah. and this aspect of that, and then be able to process your thoughts. So it's not just one. That's yeah. really cool. I like that. Yeah. Powerful. <laughs> it's, I, I get into that if I'm, sharing something which I guess is a bit too complicated or overcomplicated and I'm watching all these buttons and realizing oh my god there's like a hundred buttons here and I'm <laughs> it's a bit much isn't it I mean I've been in my creating content and yeah I, I I've been basically using messenger and I have you know for each one of those shows that I was like each for each one of those nine points I have a like a messenger account and so i've just been keeping track i've been using it as a script so i'll shoot a video and then i'll upload it to that messenger account um, like i'll text it to this group chat that's between me and myself so that i can keep track of like which files go where and then i can also make notes along the way so it's just a it's it's but it's kind of scattered so this puts everything in in nice neat orderly folders so well, that's gonna be yeah. I'll, I'll invite you in there and I think you could probably custom design the whole thing to the languaging for what you wanted because mm -hmm. um, I found like the breakdowns it could be anything and you may you may have a way of breaking it down that's particular to you and then hopefully we can get a software team to build the different types I mean right now he's a bit overwhelmed with the amount of work that I'm giving him so How are you doing, Sam? <laughs> You're leading the thematic part of our conversation. Yeah. Beautiful masculine aspect. Never seen one of those. Yeah, yeah, I feel like um mm. personally. What I'm really interested in teams is like, um, is is the psychosomatic element, and I think a lot of the times that that's left out, and it's the most important to me because I think that why we're running into so many conflicts in our relation. Uh, I watched this documentary about this guy that was from Africa, and he taught dance, and he said in Africa. They don't, they don't have like as high rates of mental health problems because they, from the beginning, they are raised in song and dance and community and support. And so, I mean, I think that this is, it might not be completely around what we're talking about in relation to the structures, but again, the the importance of really coming to the heart in in a full sense way and like and all those aspects all those chakras being really authentic um is important in the vulnerability 
in the joy, in the anger. And I really would love to see that in our new, in our new structures, because I feel like, for instance, a lot um, of what happens, what happened in the 50s, which I see happening in again in some spiritual communities is that they want to just like look at all the light and all the beauty and then all the other shit is like is essentially has to go somewhere and it usually comes into domestic abuse actually so um i really want spaces where we can hold each other and do dance and also and talk about um, this chaos. <laughs> and this light. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel in some of these conversations, like a lot of what I say isn't really like even connected. It's like, oh, that's very salty, this. But it's it's just Im important. Uh, it's true. Yeah, what are your what are your practices for like grounding and for getting that all these other emotions out every day? Coming from a mind center to a a embodied center so that we can meet each other in the poles. I guess to me, that's the, you know, the different types of conversations where we enter a healing conversation or it's very different from a design spec conversation. Or a synergizing conversation, which is very different from a, a brainstorm. And so those movements, depending, I guess, on the need of the moment, or depending upon what we're trying to do. Like right now, the three of us don't really have, a, let's say, a shared goal yet. And this is the, the second time you're in here, and I think what, me and Jordan have three before that? What's that? I think, how many did we do before? Just me and you, three? I think we did, yeah, we did three. Okay. And then this is, yeah. So this is number five. Number five. And I'd like to think at some point that we're gonna come, like in itself, I think these are very valuable. But I guess as the three of us are four, or as we get more people, you know, why are we coming together and what do we wanna to create together? And with that mm -hmm. reference point then, like if we say we're going to do a show, you know, when Jordan comes back and we're going to, you know, do some sort of event that changes the nature of the conversation. Cause now we have to figure out how to do that and what has to happen. And, and in the midst of that, I think things come up to stop it. Things come up where we don't feel like we're connected or things come up where we're not inspired. And I guess for me, that would be my reference point for emotional work. Um, because either we're, we're heading towards what we want to accomplish or we're not. And if we're not, it's usually because we're at a rapport with one another or we're locked ourselves. And then we would want some sort of process to get through that. Um, otherwise, we might be in a general conversation that we don't really have a goal of where we're going. And we may or may not want to share our healing or share where we're at. Again, it's kind of like, you know, what conversation are we in? why are we talking and how that's the, I guess how it would answer that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I felt in the theme, in the thematics of, of the society's growth, um, the vulnerability and the true entirety of a being needs to be represented. And it's been very Hollywood and very superficial. And like, we're gonna figure this all out and we have all these plans and it's all great. And then it, 
it doesn't work and people are like clinging to like addictions and things like that because they're like i i um, i i i don't feel connected i don't feel seen because you know like mommy and daddy were fighting and I haven't worked that and it's like it's so it's so uh it's it's so like not cool to talk about man but it's like so important to talk about and like how do we create those how do we create these groups where where we can feel comfortable and like also also no yeah like everybody has different um mechanisms of of expansion and retraction so the social permaculture side of a group it's important to understand these psychological aspects so that everybody feels hurt because there will be people that will be like i'm just yeah it's fine it's fine and, and then afterwards they will feel a certain feeling. And we don't see that because people are scared to be like honest about their feelings. Less than a minute left. Just should have a little hand signal. If, uh, this is 40 minutes. I can, uh, if you want to go on, I can re-invite you and you want to do a part two? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Because we're about, it's going to stop and there's nothing I can do to stop. No. Uh, do you want to continue or do you want to end here? Um, I think we can, I'd like to continue. I'd like to touch in a little bit more. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to end this and then we'll do a part two. Okay. okay.